Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with Converge, and again, welcome to this blog series where we're talking about essentially making whole patterns on a part. I know it seems fairly simple, but we've got a lot of different ways that we can handle this, and again, depending on your application, the things you're designing, one of these has to be a good fit and help you guys speed up the modeling process. So we've talked about a lot of stuff in the first five videos. If you guys haven't followed along, we first started with global variables, talking about how we can use global variables and link them to sketches and features. Then we talked about sketch references. We talked about making construction lines, having equal constraints on edges, and helping drive patterns that way. Then we talked about actual equations, grabbing different parameters like the length and the width of a box and helping drive the pattern itself based on that. We took it a step further with if-else statements, adding some intelligence based on the overall size of our part, figuring out how many instances would be inside of that based on those statements. And then the last one, we did library features. So this took sort of a combination of the second and third video where we did sketch references and the curve-driven pattern, and then it took it to the next level, allowing us to create a feature that we could drag and drop onto our parts. So again, like I said, there's really a lot of different ways that we can handle these similar types of problems. So in this video today, we're going to talk about configurations and um, possibly get into design tables. We'll have to see a, a bit of how long this actually takes, but those are the next two topics, configurations and design tables and helping drive these. If you guys have any experience with Excel and doing maybe custom programming in Excel, adding... Um, you know, using various API functionality to add different things in Excel, using design tables can really bump the functionality up quite a bit in terms of making equations and driving files and doing all this different stuff um, using Excel functionality because it is integrated into SOLIDWORKS pretty well. Now there are some differences. Uh, currently I am using a Windows 7 install. I'm using SOLIDWORKS 2018 and I'm using the most current version of Excel. Uh, based on the version of Windows you have, the version of Excel you have, and the version of SOLIDWORKS you have, you may or may not see things looking a little different than what, what I have here. Uh, so keep that in mind that the functionality does differ. It does look a little bit different uh, from time to time, but uh, overall the process will still be the same. So let's get started first by, again, making our base part. We're just going to make a rectangle. And the reason I'm making this the same every time is because I don't really want you guys to have to download files. If you're not using SOLIDWORKS 2018 or 19, then you can still follow along because the functionality has been the same for quite a while on SOLIDWORKS. So just make these basic parts. And again, I like to come in and I like to name my dimensions. So in this case, if we double click on it, I'm just gonna call this box width. And yes, I could go in and I could set up a global variable like we did early on, uh, but we can also just double click on these and I'll call this uh, box height and we'll go ahead and extrude that out and we'll just bring it up again one inch and in here you notice that I can't really name this value but what I can do is I can double click on it and then when it's shown here on the screen I can double click here and depending on where you double click you might just get the quick edit box and you might or you might actually bring up this modify dialog box so you might have to double click it uh, a couple times before you get this to pop up, but then we'll call this box thickness. We can obviously go back into our equation manager as well and uh, manipulate just these dimensions. So depending on which view we're looking at, if we go into the dimension view, we can rename these on the fly in here. So uh, keep that in mind as well. If you don't want to do it in the sketch, just make sure that you do it fairly early on um, because it will really simplify things when we get into configurations uh, and especially design tables. It's also a good idea to rename your sketches and features. And the reason is because these dimensions are referenced at the sketch level and at the feature level. So uh, for example, sketch one, we'll call this uh, box base and boss extrude, we'll call this uh, box I don't even know what we'll call it. We'll call this box extrude. So this way that it'll be, uh, for this 10 inch dimension, it's box width at box base at box extrude. So that way, just looking at it on an Excel spreadsheet and a configuration, we know exactly what that value is. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create, uh, in this case, we're gonna create again, just some reference uh, construction lines. We're gonna go ahead and just drag and drop 
bring this over. Make sure that these lines are, in this case, horizontal. We want to make sure that these three are equal to each other. And then we give them a dimension. So I'm going to give this, again, one inch dimension. And I'm going to call it edge offset. And again, we're going to use the center point circle. We'll give it a diameter of half inch. And again, we want to double click on that. And we'll call this whole diameter. So now we have everything we need. We can rotate this around. We can do an extrude cut through all. And we can pattern it. So again, we're going to do a curve driven pattern. The direction is going to be just this single edge here. And it's still highlighted, but we can't see it because the sketch is actually hidden uh, directly after the feature is used. So we will have to go back and show it so we can select it. We're going to use equal spacing, 10 instances, all the same stuff that we've done in all the other videos, just keeping it consistent. Then we can go back and we can hide that sketch. And again, it's a good idea to, to rename everything while it's fresh in your mind. So we're going to call this a whole ref ref sketch. And we'll call cut extrude one whole cut or a whole extrude or whatever you want to call it. And then we'll call the curve pattern whole pattern. So now we have all of our sketches and all of our features renamed. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. You can save it wherever you like. Uh, it's just a good idea to save it at some point. So let's go ahead and call this configurations and save that. So now that we have our file saved, we're going to navigate over to the configuration manager tab. Notice in here that we have default configurations. There are two types of configurations that we want to talk about. Now, if we right click at the top level, we can add a configuration. If we right click on the configuration itself, we have a derived configuration. So the important distinctions between the two is that a derived configuration is a child of another configuration, which means that anything that happens at the top level happens at the child level or the derived configuration. For our example, what we want to do is we want to right click at the top level and just add a new configuration. And we'll call this, um, we just need to give it a configuration name. In this case, we're going to call the first one um, long pattern. So this would likely be a pattern on a longer plate. We're going to add one more configuration and we'll call this one short pattern. So what happens with configurations is that you're able to determine whether or not features are suppressed, some of the dimensions in sketches and things in features, and you can control them at that level. So what we'll do, for example, for the short pattern is inside of the whole pattern feature, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to use this configure feature option. So once we do this, we instantly get this box that says modify configurations and we can determine whether or not things are suppressed. But if we use this drop down, we can pick up on dimensions and we can actually drive those dimensions directly in each configuration. So for example, I want to make the number of instances for the short pattern five. I'm going to go ahead and click this rebuild active configuration and say, okay. So now our short configuration has five instances and the long one, we'll go ahead and rebuild it has 10. So now, since both of them are rebuilt, we'll go back and forth between them. And you can see that this is a quick way for us to make multiple instances of the same thing. We could also have another configuration. Let's go ahead and just add a new configuration and we'll call this one small hole. Now what we're going to do with this version is we're actually going to change the diameter of the hole. So I'm going to go to this reference sketch. I'm going to right click and select configure feature. So inside of here, if I use this drop down, now you can see that naming those sketches and naming those dimensions is where it really helps because the top level, it says whole reference sketch. And over here we have whole diameter. I'm just going to click on that. It'll add the column for me. And now in the small hole version, I can come in here and I can say, well, I want this to be quarter inch hole and I can rebuild it. And I'm going to go ahead and rebuild all configurations. So that way I can quickly go back and forth between them all. So now short pattern, we're going to go ahead and rebuild long pattern will rebuild. And now we have long pattern, short pattern using the half inch hole size. Then we have the small hole version, which uses 10 instances and the quarter inch hole. So hopefully you can start to see that doing it this way allows us to uh, very quickly and easily come in and modify some of these parameters. 
We can also go into our equation manager and inside of here at the top, you'll notice that we can pick a configuration. So in the small hole configuration, you can see that the hole diameter at hole reference sketch is quarter inch. However, if we go to the short pattern, it is half inch. If we decide that we want to modify these parameters directly inside of here, as soon as we click on these, you'll notice that we have an icon on the right hand side that says this configuration, all configurations or specify. So for example, if I want the whole diameter to be smaller on the short pattern or bigger, let's make it 0.75, we can have it change on just this configuration alone. So if we rebuild it, you'll notice that on the screen, we now have the larger holes. If we go to the long pattern, we'll go ahead and rebuild everything. So now you can see that the long pattern has the smaller half inch holes in 10 instances. And then if we go to the small hole, it uses 10 and it uses a quarter inch pattern. So you can see that there are various ways that we can change these parameters. We can add configurations. We can go in and we can manipulate these values through various means, whether it's right clicking and selecting configure feature and allowing us to decide whether or not we want to suppress features or not. If we want to modify the dimensions, if we want to add any different parameters in here, we can control all that through configuring features, through configuring the sketch, or actually going into our equation manager and driving them in there as well. So this video has gone on for about, I don't know, 12 minutes or so. So I don't think adding in design tables is going to be very good. So we'll cover that design tables in the next video, but make sure that you save this file because we're going to use this file in our design tables video. So as always, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Hopefully this stuff is helpful to you. I know, at this point, we've covered geez, six different ways to make patterns on a just a rectangular plate. So uh, I know it's probably getting pretty tedious, but I promise you that some of these methods will help with whatever parts you're designing. It doesn't have to be a simple whole pattern on a plate, but the same topics, the same concepts will come in handy in something else. So again, any questions, let us know, and hopefully we we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.